Welcome back to the Politics and Media programme. It's almost a year since nine Asian men were put in prison for raping and sexually abusing young girls in Rochdale. The horrific case sparked a heated debate about whether race, or even religion, was a factor in the abuse. A year on, the Muslim Council of Britain has announced a new programme to counteract the grooming of children for sex, saying people have a religious duty to speak out about the crime. The Council is planning a national conference to educate people about grooming. So is this a project which can help in tackling the abuse of children, or does having a Muslim-led initiative unwittingly imply that the grooming is a Muslim problem? Joining me in the studio, we have Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra, Assistant Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain, who's been at the forefront of the new initiative. I'm also pleased to welcome Omar El Hamdoun, the President of the Muslim Association of Britain, and Alias Kamani, who's co-director of Street UK, as well as being a local councillor. Welcome to the programme, everybody. Sheikh, just tell us a little bit about what this programme is and what you hope to achieve with it. The thinking behind it is that we get together uh, imams, mosque and community leaders, other influential people within our communities around the country to attend this conference where we will have experts and specialists who work in this field and in this area to give us information, data and share with us their findings of their surveys and their work. Uh, we're hoping that we will be able to better educate our community leaders about the whole issue of grooming. What is grooming? What are the different forms that grooming takes? How to spot signs of grooming? And when you find out what to do about it and how to do uh, something against it, something about it, all within the uh, legal framework of this country. But at the same time also, to empower the community uh, to be able to tell on these groomers who many times hide within and behind the curtains of the community. So it's a multiple uh, uh, objective kind of conference and we're hoping that it will be perhaps the beginning of mobilizing our communities at grassroots level. Uh, we uh, appreciate that as a Muslim Council of Britain, we neither have the expertise to deal with grooming, nor do we have the resources to deal with the grooming issue. What we've done is we've looked out to the Muslim community and to the other statutory and non-statutory organizations who work in this field so that we could partner with them, cooperate with them, and support them in the work that they're already doing. Mm. And I'm sure Alias will tell us some of the wonderful work that Street are doing in tackling this issue. So if I could just perhaps uh, mention some of the organizations that we have mm. already begun to work with uh, through initial meetings and discussions, uh, the likes of uh, the Muslim Youth Helpline, Islamic Society of Britain, the uh, Muslim Women's Network UK, the Henna Foundation, um, non-Muslim organizations such as Hope Not Hate, um, organizations that have championed the cause of children uh, for generations, the NSPCC. Uh, we have uh, had discussions with uh, a number of police forces. Uh, and really, this is about the whole nation coming together against a problem uh, which, sadly, uh, no community uh, is absent of. Mm. Every community, regardless mm. of race or religion, has got these evil, uh, disgusting and abhorrent people mm. within their ranks. Oh, my. I mean, well, that's, a, that's an important point that uh, the Sheikh makes at the end there, because um, uh, obviously any initiatives against uh, rape or sexual abuse are, are welcome, but it's hardly something which is limited to the, to, the, to the Muslim community. These abuses take place right across the communities. Um, do, what do you think is the, is the particular virtue of a, of a Muslim-led initiative here? I mean, obviously, there's, I think there's two ways of, of looking at it, and it's obviously always perceptions are going to differ. I think one point that you made in the opening remark is that does or is it because the Muslim Council of Britain is highlighting this issue? Does it mean it is a Muslim problem? And I think uh, it's been clear throughout that this is not nothing to do with Muslims specifically. It's a criminal activity. So it affects all societies. Does it affect Muslims? Yes, it does as well. So Muslims have to speak out. And I think it's important as Muslim Council of Britain or as Muslim organizations that this kind of activity is not because 
we are Muslim per se, but it's because we are part of society. And as Muslims, as British Muslims, part of society, we have a duty to uh, work with any issue where we can try and actually prevent crime and promote better uh, society, cohesion, etc. So I think it's, it's an excellent step in the right direction, but I think there's also a uh, there's also a danger of being in the scenario, you know, damn, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, sometimes mm. if the Muslims don't do it, then they're saying, why aren't you speaking about it? And if you do, then the issue is, well, are you doing it because it's a Muslim problem? Mm. Mm. Uh, Sheikh was referring to some of the work that you've been doing. So just tell us a little bit about that and how you see it fitting into this project. Well, street works with all men from all backgrounds and in particular young men who are from quite deprived areas who are at risk of criminality and violence, sexual abuse and exploitation. So it's important that we started off, although we're a Muslim ethos project, we don't say we work only with Muslims, we work across the whole of society. Because I don't want to give that impression that you know, we will deal with Muslim issues and, and not with the rest of society and, and, and we ignore the fact that, you know, that there are other kind of abuses taking place. So that's important to recognise that we've always framed this as an issue around young men across the whole of British society. And if anything, you know, the media and publicity that we have at the moment has put us at the forefront of the debate and I think that's a really good thing and we're showing leadership and we're saying that, you know, our core Islamic values are about protecting and safeguarding the weak and the vulnerable and in children in particular. And so it's important that we're offering that to the, to the mainstream as a model and approach to work. And the way that Street does is obviously, you know, offering that. Now, we work in lots of different ways. One of the ways is that by empowering local agents and local stakeholders to play a much more proactive role in dealing with the symptoms. And the symptoms are with a lot of young men, for example, not having appropriate sex and relationship education, very distorted views around women and respect for women, uh, living in an over-sexualized society and being influenced by, by violent pornography, uh, gangs and criminal behavior and access to organized crime groups that are also involved. So we try to channel young men away from those negative influences. And that through that, we're actually channeling them to positive citizenship, but also empowering local partners so that they can actually support young people better, connect with young people better, so they're aware of the vulnerabilities and again are able to support young people, children at the very critical junctures in their life. Now, that's also part of an overall development process by, you know, just, just doing good education and development work with young people, which needs to happen much more in the Muslim community. So I think this is a, big, a bit of a wake up call in the Muslim community that perhaps we're not doing enough to invest in our young people and really invest in terms of their emotional development and their social development. So as a result, they disconnect sometimes from the mosques, from faith leaders, from community leaders, from elders, and they seek alternative mentors and teachers who sometimes are quite negative. So it's, I think it's important to under that, understand that process and channel them away from that process. And we're also doing research. We're going out there and finding out what are the influences, influences and drivers, what are the vulnerabilities. And that research actually is valuable for all communities in the, in the mainstream so that we are driven by evidence-based practice rather than stereotypes, miscon uh, misconceptions and misinformation, which sometimes we have at the moment. But I think by being in the forefront of the debate and working with agencies across the country, we've been able to challenge some of the stereotypes and bring a balance that sexual violence occurs across all communities. So let's not pathologize Pakistani males as predators, sexual predators to the exclusion of other communities, because then actually you do a disservice to the issue. People are looking at just Pakistani mm. males and not other communities in which sexual abuse takes place. And what's the interesting thing is we want to have a much more of an open discussion. We want to empower people so that they can feel that they, they feel confident and comfortable about talking about these issues. I think that's really important as well. Mm. Uh, Sheikh, what do you hope will come out of the conference? Well, clearly we have a number of aims and objectives uh, that we're currently fine-tuning at the moment. But the key objective would be really to better educate uh, our community representatives, empower them with the knowledge that is necessary to deal with this menace, um, give them access and networking opportunity with experts and specialists such as Street, mm. where we could refer and signpost people who might turn to us as imams in our local mosques. Uh, at times we're at a loss, we don't know which way to, to guide them and to signpost them for help and assistance. And uh, as a long-term ongoing uh, activity, we hope that there will be a publication that will follow the conference where people have access to data, access to information, contact numbers, contact organizations that they could approach to help them in dealing with this issue. Mm. Um, it's early days yet, but we're also hoping that not only should we have this conference in the north of the country, but perhaps one for the Midlands and one for the south as well, 
uh, and uh, there's no reason why uh, local communities um, could not look up to this conference and perhaps organize localized conferences from within their areas with members of other communities and other faiths. Uh, clearly this conference is targeting a Muslim audience, bringing in expertise from all backgrounds, but I think there's room for localized conferences within the regions where communities of different backgrounds and of different religions can come together mm -hmm. so that we can demonstrate, absolutely demonstrate that this is not a Muslim issue, this is not a, an Asian issue, this is an issue of criminality and criminals from whatever background they are, are to be condemned and are to be stopped. Mm. And victims of whatever background are to be protected and given uh, safety from these uh, criminality. Mm. I mean, Omar, I mean, uh, grooming, um, as in the case of, of rape generally, um, doesn't really conform to the kind of media stereotype, which is that there's some sort of you know, external group of people who are preying on vulnerable people, almost you get the sense picking them up in the street or something, but actually, mostly it happens within families or by friends and by people that the, the victims know. So that's a, that's a more difficult thing to, uh, to, to crack. How do you think that this initiative might, might be able to, you know, to intervene in that situation? I think, uh, I mean, the whole, the whole issue obviously, and maybe specifically for the Muslim community or the ethnic uh, minorities, is that sometimes there are minorities or communities which maybe live in denial or, or they want to hide uh, or they feel that it's an embarrassing thing. And especially with Muslim society, which is mainly conservative, I think issues like this topic of, of you know, uh, sex and also about uh, uh, relationships is always is not always something that is always spoken about uh, and so therefore I think by allowing people to understand that it can go the wrong way it can lead people if it's not addressed properly uh, into uh, some sort of criminal activity uh, hopefully this will allow families maybe to recognize if they can see certain types of behavior uh, that are not acceptable and maybe this is how we can promote more uh, conversation in, in the community so that uh, things like this are well to, to as much as possible, you know, they are eradicated from uh, from the community. But again, it's not just about Muslims, it's about trying to work to get rid of this whole uh, problem. And I think this whole issue, uh, and maybe this can be something that is built on for the future, is that really these are just symptoms of a big, bigger problems in society. Uh, and although it might be easy uh, to point the finger at the Asian community or the Muslim community to, to you know, to, to scapegoat them, but there are really bigger issues in society and the government has to start to think about these issues, issues related to gang, issues related to, to, to sex education, uh, which I feel is not helping at all, issues related to, uh, you know, to, to marriage and, and so on. So I think maybe this can start some kind of process for the bigger uh, remedies for society. Mm. And isn't isn't the the sort of key point here, or at least a key point, is uh, allowing people to come forward and report these things? You know, you know, historically, with the question of rape, it's a question of whether a woman feels that she may come forward, uh, not only report it, but have a reasonable chance of being believed when Absolutely. when she reports. It. And if yeah. we look at the court system now, it's still tiny numbers of of rapes that are reported and even tinier numbers that That's are right. actually charged. And I think this is across the board, across all communities. In fact, the pattern yeah, really indeed, is this. Yeah. The more closed the community, the more insular it is, then the, 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 you could say the higher the wall of silence in relation to reporting intra-community sexual abuse. And there are actually communities in the UK that are far more insular and closed than the Pakistani or Muslim community. And so therefore, you know, you'll find very few incidents of intra-community sexual abuse in those communities. It's, it does take place. Uh, but it's being hidden, it's being suppressed, and the victims are sometimes completely ignored, and they're never going to come forward. So, so that's a big challenge. We need to create that openness. And what we're having now certainly are cases where individuals who are being abused as children 20 years later are now coming forward and talking about their particular experiences, and that's good. And I think we, are the, we have a, as a community don't need to label those individuals as, uh, uh, as troublemakers or as dishonouring the community. We need to show solidarity with victims. I think that's really important. And I think the conference is a, an excellent idea because we have faith leaders, community leaders showing solidarity with victims and saying that abuse is wrong 
and that when if individuals come forward, then we will safeguard and protect you and ensure that we go through the appropriate channels to ensure that your that abuse is addressed and that is prevented in terms of the future. So I think that's really important. You have to create the frameworks, uh, the, the mechanisms where people feel comfortable to come forward. Now, one of the things, street type projects, what they do is that by developing the trust and, the, and, and have being credible at the grassroots, because you're culture, you know how to culturally uh, operate in a sensitive way there, you understand people's lived realities, they relate to you, then you're able to be that conduit between the community and the statutory agencies and the safeguarding agencies. We need, need more of those conduits. Mm -hmm. And what I've said for a long period of time is that social services, police, the safeguarding boards, what they need to do is they need to have imams, they need to have community leaders on those particular panels who are also supporting that process. At the moment, they're completely detached from that. So what we have are police and social services, who try, obviously are trying to do the best job they can, but it creates a, 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 what I feel is a polarizing mechanism. When a, when a child is taken out, then that child is completely detached from the community, sometimes alienated and ostracized. That shouldn't be the case. The child is the victim. Mm. And by having community leaders and faith leaders there, we are saying, no, that child is a victim. We want that child to be in the community. We don't want them to be alienated and ostracized, okay? But we want them to be protected in the community. So I think it's really important we start setting up these frameworks for the future. Police, social services, safeguarding agencies, schools, all these key workers also have imams, community leaders, counselors, key community members in those panels providing advice and guidance mm -hmm. and showing solidarity with victims. I mean, I'm gonna <coughs> ask you about the sort of media reaction to this because, you know, I mean, all the points that, you know, that, that you've made, many people will say this is absolutely, absolutely fair enough. Um, and right that, you know, that there's a, a, an initiative here to, to deal with it. But do you feel dismayed that yeah. uh, the other institutions in the society, which might be equally singled out as particular places where this happens? I mean, I'm thinking of the, of the BBC, the Savile case, it's not now just about Savile. Mm -hmm. There have been a high, there's been a very large number of arrests. Mm -hmm. The case is running into, into hundreds now. Um, but, but nobody's carrying on up and down the country about the BBC being a home of, or having a culture which produces, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in the same way that you get the language about the Muslim community. So do, you find that, do you find that sort of debilitating, that there's not a kind of you know, level playing field across the institutions where this sort of thing takes place? Well, I mean, without doubt, I mean, th there is a lot of uh, talk, and especially with regards to issues of anti-Muslim hatred or Islamophobia across the media. Uh, and uh, the media does play a big role in uh, promoting, uh, you know, this kind of behavior because, as we know, it's it's the bad news that sells well. So when they can highlight that, yes, it's, it is Muslim men who are grooming white girls or it's you know asian uh, gangs out there it does uh, it, it does work into sort of selling the news first of all but also it ha there are hidden agendas for certain type uh, avenues of media so i think there is an element there although uh, one should be fair in saying that the media has not probably let the bbc off it has also you know, uh, has put the BBC in the hot seat, so to speak, about the issues of you know the Savile and, and other inquiries. So I think there is there is that there is that joint issue there, but it's not done enough. Uh, so maybe this conference and this initiative has a bigger, a high, a higher, you know, high, bigger work, a bigger scheme of things to actually highlight this issue uh, that it's not uh, certain communities that are the cause of this and we have to be fair because uh, the, the issue of scapegoating uh, is something that plays into uh, bigger problems it promotes more racism obviously it proposes more uh, 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 it doesn't work for cohesion it pros promotes more hatred in society so i think uh, although we don't want to just create a victimization uh, sort of uh, you know sort of propaganda that every you know every community has to get up and speak against it but we have to all work together mm. for what is something that is across the boards Sheikh, what do you think because i mean I guess we'd better not hold our breath until the bbc holds a conference saying you know we're going to be dealing with the question of grooming in the media i think for, for me uh, the approach that comes naturally to me as a muslim person is uh, one that is not require me to wait for those who have been involved in similar criminality to put their house in order first mm. before I do something about my own house. I think as Muslims, uh, we have a duty uh, to the whole of society, 
but when the rot sets in within our own house, we've got to put our house in order so that perhaps we can be a good role model, a good example for others. Uh, if I was not ready to put my own house in order, and if I was making an effort to put somebody else's house in order, it's very unlikely that they would buy into that effort. But if they see that I'm trying to do something about my own house, then they are more likely to say, actually, they're trying to better themselves. We should be better in themselves. So I'm hoping that the BBC could take a leaf out of this whole uh, exercise. But I think um, we have a religious duty. And for me, that's the most powerful driver in all this, where the blessed messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, that whosoever out of you sees any evil being committed, then you've got to use everything in your power to put an end to it, to change that situation, to make it better. And if this conference uh, can be one such component to the whole solution that we require of multi-party agency and multi-agency uh, approach, then I think it will be something that we as the MCB can be proud of, that we have initiated something along with our partners, along with other uh, people who care mm. for, for children and for, for humanity. And we're, like I said, uh, prepared to work with all. And if the BBC will give us a platform to talk about this uh, initiative, we'll gladly do it. And, and in all fairness, I, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Omar in his analysis of how the media does tend to misuse certain incidents and mm. criminality to put down one community or another. Uh, but uh, since the Radio 4 Sunday program gave the MCB the opportunity to talk about this issue, uh, uh, they've gone on and put it on their online uh, uh, site. Uh, it has led to other media outlets picking it up. Mm. And uh, uh, in a way, I could say that had it not been for that BBC Radio 4 Sunday program, we might not have had Mm. what we've got. So I think what we need to do really is to demonstrate to the media uh, uh, outlets that we are prepared to put our house in order. We will not mm. disown those people. Mm. We will not run from the problem. We will not brush it under the carpet. We are ready. If, we've, if our community is doing something wrong, we're ready to accept that there is something horribly wrong in our communities. Mm. And I think if we can demonstrate that, they will see that we need help and we are genuine, authentic, and we're ready to condemn mm. our own as we condemn others. Let me bring uh, Alice in on there. What, what do you think about this, about this sort of comparative, you know, com uh, look at what other institutions are doing? Well, it, it, I think we've got a lot that we can add value to institutions by obviously engaging communities and giving people cultural understanding of how to engage communities better. And obviously they need us as partners as well to, to work and you know to reach what are perceived as hard to reach communities uh, because we have that understanding of how to relate better. So I think there's obviously there's a need for effective kind of partnership working. And you've had some funding difficulties with the work that you've done yeah. though, haven't you? Well, I think this is a big challenge. Uh, you know, we all have identified this is a really crucial area of work and it relates to a bigger issue, which is the issue of young people's development in British society anyway, and also the issues around challenging sexual violence, which is a global epidemic, I feel, at the moment. So we can say that this is work which is so important at the moment, but the resources are just not there to do grassroots work. You see, uh, again, I want to, want to say to the audience is that the media has got this demonizing and this kind of vilification of kind of Pakistani men in particular we'll but up. practitioners haven't got that practitioners I work with are much more balanced and they're looking for mm. us to work in partnership with them and so they you know uh, don't don't have that kind of distorted kind of perception. Okay well, we're gonna have to leave it there because that's all we've got time for um, I hope you found that uh, an enlightening and informative discussion please do rejoin us next week for another edition of the politics and media program.